This episode of Lawyers Tell All is brought to you by Law Firm Conversions. If your law firm's phone is ringing, that only means your marketing is successful. It's what happens when the phone is answered that will drive your success or failure. Visit www.intakeacademy.com and claim your free copy of this groundbreaking book, along with resources on mental health for intake specialists and empathy. Plus, become eligible to receive a free 15-minute consult with Chris Mullins. Welcome to the Lawyers Tell All podcast, where Chris Mullins, the preeminent sales and communications consultant in the legal industry, shows you how it looks through lawyers' eyes. Here, innovators in the trenches provide powerful insights that help you connect with new clients, handle the sometimes harsh realities of the legal profession, and embrace the mindsets needed to succeed. Be sure to visit our website at www.lawyerstellall.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, lean in, tune in, and let's take a deep dive. Hello, everyone. It's Chris Mullins with Lawyers Tell All. And today I am interviewing Melanie Pita, and I am going to let Melanie tell you about herself. Go ahead, Melanie. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me on today. I so appreciate it. Yeah. Um, my name is Melanie Pita, and um, I am what I call myself a recovering attorney. <laughs> I, I practiced uh, um, medical malpractice litigation for the mm-hmm. first um, chapter of my life um, in Texas. And I then moved into the uh, legal tech space. So um, I'm currently the chief strategy officer at a company based out of California called Foundation AI. Okay, so how did the how did the switch happen? Like what what's what happened? Yeah, yes. Uh, well, um, part of it was I was ready to um, take on a challenge because of the, my experience with the medical records and um, trying to defend hospitals and doctors with those medical records started to become challenging Uh, as more electronic medical records became um, commonplace. The records themselves were hard to track back the patient care and what had actually happened. And I had an opportunity to um, move into an organization that was starting an electronic medical record specifically for um, rural and community hospitals. Mm -hmm. And um, so through that experience, I was there during the, you know, the rollout of the High Tech Act and and, um, really got my foundation on technology Mm -hmm. um, and always had a love for for medical records and records. Mm -hmm. And after being there for about five years, I I went into um, an organization that was legal services that was tech enabled. And that's where my journey began, where I um, 100% started focusing on technology to be used in the legal space and um, how it could really change uh, attorneys' lives. Okay, so you went from um, the 10 years practicing to the um, medical records career, mm-hmm. yep. and then, then went from that to where you are now. Yes, I, actually, I joined Foundation AI a, a little over a year ago. Um, I, uh, I started looking at the organization um, uh, almost two years ago and um, started talking with them. And what I saw was something that um, is, was unique to the space, unique to the um, legal space. Um, and I call it a, a tool that's, you know, it's not a sexy tool. Um, however, it to me reminded me of something like email where... Uh, you know, what I saw was just the opportunity to really transform the way in which law firms process their incoming documents. And it's a it's something that every single law firm um, faces as a challenge. And um, and so I was really excited to get involved, and especially because, you know, it's using AI to do it. Yeah. And practicing for 10 years is a long time. So what, 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 happened to make you turn the corner and you started having eyes elsewhere? Well, you know, I think that 
any young lawyer going in, you have huge aspirations and you, um, you know, you have an eye on becoming partner in so many years and you have an eye on trying so many cases and, you know, ultimately, um, a lot of attorneys, it comes down to what's the work-life balance yeah. and figuring out how to actually do that. And at the point where I chose to to leave the firm, um, some opportunities are pre presented to me. I was um, I was younger, obviously. Uh, I was getting engaged, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself. I can continue to practice and try cases and do the traditional law firm work, but I think there's a way for me to use my experience and my background and to go into new avenues while also feeling like I could have a better work-life balance with kids. And that's really what pushed me over the edge. Um, and then, of course, there was that tech piece and the medical records piece. And so when things aligned, I was like, this is a great time to do it. Yeah. What made you decide to be an attorney to begin with? Oh, gee whiz. Um, <laughs> well, of course, you know, your parents, when you're in high school and you're arguing with them and, uh, okay. and coming up with ways to, you know, make your position clear, you know, family starts, you know, making comments about you should be a lawyer. Um, but I, I always loved um, debate and I loved um, being able to analyze things and quite frankly, um, taking a position, taking a, a viewpoint mm -hmm. and um, went into college. I was a speech major and mm -hmm. um, chose to be a speech major because I wanted to learn how to um, how to, to write and to write well and write speeches and give speeches. And um, then as I went to law school, there was no question in my mind that I wanted to be a litigator, that that was, yeah. that was my path. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I, I relish the fact that I went to law school. Um, I, I truly believe that it is foundational to everything else that I've have done in the past in my career and everything that I am doing in the future in my career. Um, I've just been fortunate over the last uh, almost 20 years to build upon that and have opportunities and mentors to take me into the more of a business side of, of life and using the, the legal foundation as um, part of my skill set. Okay. Yeah. And so did you want medical malpractice or how did that happen? Yeah, so um, I, my my mother uh, was a bedside nurse and then became a nursing professor. My aunt is a physician, so mm. I was surrounded by medical people in my life. And when I got out of law school, um, I started you know interviewing with firms, and I found a firm that specialized in medical malpractice and it just rang true to me. I thought this is, okay. this is interesting. Um, let's give it a shot. Let's see what it's like. And then I, you know, fell in love with it. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, let's fast forward and let's talk about now. Yes. Tell me, tell me about the company you're with. Tell me what it's all about. Talk to us. Yeah. So I am um, with a company called Foundation AI. And um, as I mentioned, it's based out of California. Um, the, the product is, is one that integrates directly with a law firm's um, intake uh, sources of documents. So scanners and email inboxes and fax machines and, and even, um, you know, when thinking about that paper mail that's being scanned into those scanners. So we ingest all of those documents and then we um, are serve as a bridge between those ingestion points and then the downstream practice management system. And it, the product helps to streamline all of the processing and splitting of those documents, getting them into the right matter, um, classifying them correctly and making sure they're saved to the right place inside that practice management system. And then ultimately making sure the right people know that those documents have arrived so that they can then 
act on them um, as need be. And, um, you know, what we find is that firms, you know, oftentimes the mail that's coming in, it's so important to um, the working up of a case. And there are times of really important documents that are coming in. The firms are busy. I mean, even when I was practicing, yeah. um, you know, it was kind of like we're working on a motion today or we're preparing for a hearing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you're so focused on what I need to accomplish today that the mail oftentimes gets like it's it's a have to. But, mm-hmm. you know, whoever's doing that, if they could be doing five things and you're pulling them off of that to focus on the need today. And then the mail ends up becoming the last thing of the day. So, um, yeah, so we're we're really um, enjoying the feedback we get from firms just on the time savings and the accuracy and so forth with with our product. So it's you know it's a fun um, opportunity, and um, um, we're working with some really great firms. Okay, so you 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 submitted some questions, and before I get to those questions, um, what? What's the what's the ideal law firm like? Where are they right now in their in their business that that makes them the right fit for you folks? Quite frankly, you know, we work with firms that are everything from solo practitioners all the way up to some of the largest firms in the country, um, and we're really focused in on that personal injury space, right? Okay. Those firms are oftentimes the ones that are most inundated with um, incoming case documents, whether it be, you know, pleadings and being served, you know, served documents upon them or whether it's medical records or correspondence or discovery or whatever it may be that's coming into them each day. And um, so those firms are really ripe um, for, the use of a tool like ours and um, firms are also, you know, looking at ways that they can, they're wanting to scale their businesses. So they're looking at ways that they can um, not have to continue to add headcount, but add additional case volumes to their firms. Okay. Um, Accuracy. They're oftentimes having problems with um, either getting documents named appropriately or documents come in the firm and, and someone knows they've seen it, but yeah. they're not sure, that, like, and they need it right now, but they can't find it. Yeah. Um, we've also had feedback from firms saying that, uh, especially per- personal injury firms, that a documents come in and um, they weren't aware of it. And that document um, had key information that, that would have been um, a really pinnacle in their decision of whether to settle or not. And so oh, we're getting yeah. all kinds yeah. of feedback, everything from just, you know, speed to um, accuracy, scaling to actually having like real life impact on decisions that they, they could be making in their cases. So personal injury firms are are really right for it. We see um, we see medical malpractice firms coming and we see yeah. Social security disability and yeah. um Veterans Affairs and you name it. So any of those firms that are workers comp, any of those firms that have a lot of documents coming into them, they're trying right. to manage in and day out are are perfect for this type of functionality. So, um, but one thing about AI is how do how do um, how do you audit AI? Because I mean AI, yeah, I everything that you're saying, absolutely. But you know, AI is AI, so it still has to kind of like be proofed or audited or whatever you call it. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. So in the AI world, there's a term called human in the loop. Human in loop. Hoop, human in the loop. So there's okay. a loop, right? So that a human is part of it. Okay. Um, and, you know, anytime you're using AI, whether it be our product or any other product that's being used within your law firm, right. the question to ask that um the company that's selling it to you is, you know, how how does the human in the loop process work? Because um, AI has, think of it as a dial of accuracy, right? Mm-hmm. How accurate the information is going to be. The tighter you turn that dial, right, right, the more opportunity there is, the more need there is to have that human in the loop. And what I mean by that is 
if you have, um, for example, in our case, if you have documents that are coming in and you want to find, you want the a very specific thing to be extracted out of that document, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, or you want several things to be extracted out of that document. So let's say you've got um, a, a document that is a notice of hearing and you want all of the notice of hearing dates and details, the location, mm -hmm. uh, what it's about. You want all of those things to be not just um, the document itself to get into that downstream system, but you want those things to be extracted because you mm -hmm. want to do something with them in your practice management system. The tighter you make that, meaning that we're going to be super accurate on it, right, mm -hmm. um, means that there's more need for someone to look at and yeah. potentially validate that information. Um, I was looking at another product recently and I was I was somewhat surprised because the way in which you do this um, is can either be really easy for that law firm to manage or can be really challenging mm -hmm. right um, and in our case we've got a um, a dashboard or a UI that they as the mail's coming in and whoever's the person that handles the mail today mm -hmm. would be doing that um, many of the documents are automatic. They're automated through. It's 100%, um, no question accuracy. Some of them, they need that human in the loop. There's yeah. some products out there that they don't have a UI like that, and they're telling firms that, yes, we're going to run it through the AI. We're going to create the summary for you. We're going to create the output for you. But you need to then go back into that original document. Yeah. Mm. You need to read the original document. You need to read the summary to make sure that it's right. Yeah. So, you know, that's just an example of, of yes, and many times, especially when you're doing generative AI, it can be really helpful for the firm. Um, but there's still that human element where someone, you can't just use the summary and think that, or use the output and think that it's, um, it's, it's ready for you just to put into a brief, for example, or send to a, Right, uh, you know, a customer or a client for that matter. So, um, but there are, like I said, there are different types of AI. Um, there is, all of us are hearing about chat GBT, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that is what you would call a generative AI tool. It's generating something for you, right? So you put in your question or the, what you're looking for and that searches its massive, you know, um, a database of documents and it's pulling something back for you, right? It's generated for you. Um, the type of AI Foundation AI uses is a AI that's using um, language models. So it's teaching um, the model mm -hmm. to look at a document. And just like you or I or our brains, we look at a document and we'd say, oh, this is a pleading. Oh, this is the Mary Smith case. Oh, this is the claim number. Mm -hmm. Our AI is learning and has learned to look at documents and identify these things so then it can then route it into that downstream system. So we're not necessarily generating AI. We're not like creating a summary of what's in it or, um, mm -hmm. you know, responsive answers or doing research. Um, so there's different types of AI. Mm -hmm. um, that are in play and um, you know the generative stuff is is kind of the the stuff that's newer um, and needs more um, yeah. you know inspection so, so I, yeah. I hope that helps I think yeah I yeah, know that helps and it makes sense the generative stuff. It needs more human in the loop right yes 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 yeah. and you know with our product in perspective in, in particular we do have audit trails so every firm wants to know like can we see um, when documents came in, like was were, were they automatically routed in or did someone in our office look at it and what did they do with it, right? Did they validate it? Did they do something else with it? So um, just like most products, we have audit trails as well that just, you know, serve as a, a way for firms to have a little bit of comfort and, and you know, be able to go back and, and see what, what's happened. Yeah, um, but with your... With your company, do you provide like one-stop shop, everything, so the firm doesn't have to worry about the um, the human in the loop part? You 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 just like you're done. Yeah, 
We do. We do. We do both. Um, it depends on the firm's press preference. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. thing with that dial mm -hmm. um, is um, how tightly firms want that dial to be or to not be for, for their practice. So if you like when I go back to documents and I talk about extractions, mm -hmm. that's how many fields or how many um, areas of data that you want to pull out of a document. Right. So when I talked about that notice, um, you're pulling out the date, location, the time, who's going to appear for that deposition or uh, for that hearing, um, what the name of the um, pleading is, or the notice of hearing is. So as you do more extraction of documents, that's where, you know, it's more work happening with that AI. It's more responsible for what it's, what it's um, identifying versus when you've got a simple um, piece of correspondence that's coming in. And you're just like, oh, I want to know this is a correspondence on the Mary Smith case and it's claim number one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Far easier to identify mm -hmm. and to route. Mm -hmm. And okay. the accuracy is a lot higher too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what about the people part? You know, everybody's nervous and jerky about AI is going to replace jobs. Correct. Yes. Um, well, as I mentioned, um, even if I'm that attorney and I'm using AI in my law firm, and I'm using tools to help me, um, you know, summarize medical records, for example, or mm -hmm. create responses to discovery, mm -hmm. or write a brief, create a contract. Mm -hmm. All of there are several tools out there that are allowing firms to do that type of, um, of work within their mm -hmm. offices. Um, however, those tools are just tools. Right, yeah. You aren't attorneys they don't have or paralegals for that matter they they are helpful to get you going um i think of it as like you know using a template for a letter right um they're great for suggestive yeah. but you as the attorney you still own that work your name is still going on that document it is still your bar license yeah. right right so um i view those as opportunities to help boost you but you're still going to look at it. It's not going to replace you. Um, it can help speed you, but it's it's not going to replace you. It can also help you to not burn out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, thinking of, I'm thinking also of like younger generations. Um, you know, I heard something recently about the number of baby boomers that are retiring each month. And I'm, you think about younger generations coming into practice and what they're used to and the type of technology they are going to pretty much expect. Yeah, right. Right? Um, mm -hmm. Being in firms for them to choose to work with that firm. And um, like you said about the burnout piece, mm -hmm. how nice is it if you can have tools that help younger lawyers maybe um, – you know, do things a little, um, you know, faster or yeah. even to help coach and guide them. Mm -hmm. but I think there's a, also the other side of it is them not relying on it. As right, the, they don't rely on it, yeah. Yeah. But the idea, too, that they can put their energy into being the attorney. Correct. And not everything yeah. else. Yeah, and if you think about it, anyone who's practicing law, they're, you think about throughout your course of the day, Things that you're doing where you're just like, really, I cannot believe that I have a bar. I have a, I'm an attorney. I've practiced for so many years and I'm digging around for this, right? Yeah, exactly. Or like yeah. my time is being spent on that. Like I never yeah. thought this is where I'd be spending my time just trying to run the practice. Yeah. Um, and so I, there are definitely opportunities where technology and AI um, can help you there to help you right. actually do the heavy brain work and right. the strategy behind the case instead of worrying about, you know, trying to find a document. <laughs> yeah, especially like the smaller firms that are maybe, you know, just starting, like you were saying, like the, the younger attorneys, I think that would be great. I don't think it would replace people, but I think it, it, but I think it will help you scale. So you, like you said, you might not need as many people. Right. 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 And so, and we've yeah. also seen, you know, where I'll give you an example of a, a mass tort firm. Um, 
So this particular firm, they send mailers out to um, people that, you know, potentially have been injured, let's say, by a medication. Mm -hmm. And they found that the best way to communicate with, with those potential um, clients is via mail, paper mail, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, one of the challenges... They're older, they, older clients, older... Yes. Yeah. And they're yeah. not responding by text. They're not, yeah. and emails are slower, and or they yeah. may not figure out how to use the form or whatever have yeah. you. And and so they they decided that the best way for them to reach them was by sending a paper mailer. Right. Yeah. However, their challenge was those paper mailers were coming back in, and they were coming back in by the thousands, right? Mm -hmm. And they had to have to hire people to send and scan these you know, open batches and batches of mail yeah. and all of these yeah. and then figuring out which like uploading them and figure out which um, file they went to. Mm -hmm. And it was really, it was just a time suck for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as the case, you know, throughout the case, like they didn't need these people to be the scanning people all the time. Yeah. And so they're like, how can we re like solve this problem mm -hmm. so that, Either our paralegals aren't being shifted over to do those things or our case managers can actually work on the case. Mm -hmm. um, right, and, yeah. and so it's things like that, um, solving those problems for firms, even yeah. though, you know, large in scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so just to um, mention intake for a minute. So I, I believe that AI is, you know, perfect for intake in a lot of different ways. I mean, there's things that, that we're, we're working on behind the scenes, but I mean, even, I don't think AI can replace the, the people part of that live conversation, but I think it's possible it can replace um, live people for chat. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. For, yes. you know, get it, get it right. Don't sound like a robot. And I think it, you know, it could streamline and do that. Yes. Yeah. My husband actually is a personal injury attorney and his firm um has some AI in place where let's say it's the weekend and someone um goes to their site or calls in mm -hmm. and they have a tool in place that is actually it it's an AI. Yeah. It, it sounds like a human. Yeah. And the whole point of it is just to get that um that prospective client signed up. Yeah. Once that then happens and it's going over to their intake team to do the rest of the work, mm -hmm. but it's a great opportunity for them to be able to quickly respond and, um, you know, be able to get customers or clients in the door. Yeah. And, and, you know, in that example, you can learn from AI because if AI can actually get the prospect to sign up and then yes. the, <laughs> the, does the other later will then wait a minute. But yeah, what um, are we know, what are we not saying we should? <laughs> yeah, maybe we should be doing something completely different. Let's yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So I think yeah, it's great. There's all kinds of opportunities. So um what what else do you want people to know before we say so long? You know, I would say that um AI over the last year in in the law firm space is it's a hot topic. Yeah. Um every, it's a buzzword. Mm -hmm. And you know explore it and there are tons of tools out there that can really impact your firm to the positive and um but spend time exploring um with the the company that you're talking to make sure that the ai is actually ai and not they're just they're not slapping the name AI on it and and you're getting something else mm -hmm. um and if there are any CLEs out there on the topic and, mm -hmm. and, um, or if you're at a conference and there's an opportunity to go to a session, go to a session, learn about it. Um, you know, think of AI as a tool that um, helps you as a business become more strategic. And, and many firms are definitely shifting their mindset into, we are a business, we are a company. And um, what are ways that we can, grow and scale and become accurate in those things. And I'd say just, you know, explore them. Um, it's AI is here to stay. It's yeah. not going to leave. Right. Um, and, you know, find the right tools for your organization. And it can really, it can make a difference. Perfect. Do you, can you think of any um, tools to try it out in AI like you were talking about? 
Perfect. Yeah. So um, obviously Foundation AI, that's ours. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. um, there is a great tool out there. Um, it's uh, called Esquire Tech, an AI tool as well, and it helps um, on the discovery side of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a tool out there called Even Up. Um, it's a great tool that helps um, create demand letters mm-hmm. um, for, for personal injury firms. Mm-hmm. Um, there's um, also AI out there um, that, that's doing, you know, different types of uh, research. Um, right. Another tool, I believe, is Gavel. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So there are some really great tools out there. Um, and if you have a practice management system, I'd say go to their user conference because there are a lot of vendors there um, that are sponsoring the conference that are our partners. You know, they integrate in with those practice management systems such as, such as ourselves. And great, well, just explore it. Go check it out, you know. Go see what's, yeah. what's out there. Yeah, don't be afraid of it. Well, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time. How can everybody get in touch with you? Yeah, so um, obviously on, on LinkedIn, I'm Melanie um, Breed Love PETA on LinkedIn, so you can find me there. Um, you can also reach out to me via email at uh, melanie.p at Foundation AI. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everyone. We'll see you again real soon. Chris Mullins, Lawyers Tell All. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Lawyers Tell All where Chris Mullins takes you on a journey with lawyers in the trenches who show you the realities of what it takes to succeed in this chaotic, crowded, ever-changing profession. Remember to visit our website at www.lawyerstellall.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on Lawyers Tell All. Thank you.